going on everybody this is jacob vile today's video i'm going to be discussing voltage watch time so you're going to want to always have some form of voltage supply device that you can be able to watch your voltage at any given time for your system so whether you got a small system with 500 watt amp or you've got multiple amps with 25,000, 30,000, etc additional amps so whatever you got you want to have some kind of voltmeter that you're going to be able to have as a watch point at all times what i mean by that is you need to have something that you can visually go by sorry it's a little loud that you can visually see at any given time how everything looks so you see how i have a voltage meter right here so while i'm driving i can see this voltage and right now my vehicle is off for this video discussion but this is something that you definitely need uh this is going to be not new this video is not going to be for people that don't like have a, a voltmeter already or, but this is still good for you guys to, to understand how i wire it that part you're going to want to know for the guys that know this so how I wire this, you're going to want to know. But for the new guys that don't have a voltmeter, you need to get one. Whether you have a cheap one, just look it up. Google it. Look on Amazon. Just find a site. You can find voltage meters to be able to monitor your output of your um, your battery supply. So where your voltage is always at. Whether you're driving, you're at idle, etc. So one thing before I start with this is your voltage should never go below like 12, 12, 12, 2, 12, 3. At any given point, anything below that is very, very scary and dangerous. It starts leading to more heat, clipping, um, distortion, a lot of things like that. And when your vehicle's on, obviously 14, 4 or higher is good. Some people are running even up to the 15s, depending on how your alternator supply is. But anyway, concept of this video. So always have a voltmeter for your system so now i'm going to go into how i wire this and this is for any guys whether you have done this for years or not you guys can let me know in the comments if you agree or not so where do you run your power supply from so a lot of people run it straight to their head unit power which is a no-no because what happens is how do you know what your voltage is in the back of your amplifier your amplifier is what's going to be call it causing the most draw for your current so your power wire that's on your voltmeter regardless of what kind of voltmeter you got just use this concept your power wire is the most important location point your ground you can ground from your head unit i personally ground it from the back battery you can also use your blue wire to turn it on from your head unit but your power wire is your voltage supply number so where this comes from is very important i would never wire this from the head unit because your amplifier is pulling the most current so what i'm going to show you is this is where you want to put it um, there's two options, of course, and some of you guys that already watch and know what I'm going to say, but it's for the guys that are learning. This is for people that are still learning. And if you didn't know this, then now you do. So this isn't the prettiest, but the concept's what I want you to use. So I personally would recommend running straight to your amplifier input. If you have more than one amp, then just choose one of them. But this is the most efficient place to place your voltmeter reading location is on the power wire of your input for your amplifier. I don't personally do that because I just prefer the battery because the battery is where the supply is. But if you can, number one option would be your amplifier. Um, second option would be your battery. So your back batteries is another good option. Jacob, I don't have a back battery. What do I do? Well, wire to your front battery. Um, it's better than your head unit because your front battery is your main battery reserve supply area. And you're going to have some form of variation between your head unit and your back battery and that voltage range difference can be from like 0.2 to variance of over a whole volt it just depends on the logical system of your vehicle and how your grounds are but anyway so i just have uh that's why you have a little raggedy raggedy wire you see here it's literally some cheap 16 ga uh, 14 gauge so that's my power wire ran to my front voltage meter reader and of course, this is a constant current supply, but it's, I'm telling you, this is what you want to be able to read from. And it only turns on and pulls draw when the blue wire is turned on from your head unit. So whether you have it on your, your amplifier or you have it on your battery, those are your options that I would recommend if you have a voltage meter. And if you don't have a voltage meter, first off, get a voltage meter. It's scary to not know what your voltage is when you're playing or even when you don't have a system and just to know your voltage in general. It's nice to know because if you start having electrical issues, the first thing you want to look at is your voltage. Do you have voltage issues because your alternator is bad, your battery is bad, your cells are going bad in your battery, et cetera. So stuff like that. So anyway, hope this video helped taught somebody something. So th thanks for always watching, guys. Appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't. Remember, this isn't the prettiest, but use the concept for your system and have a voltage meter. So in summary to end this video, run a voltage meter if you don't have a voltage meter. And if you do have a voltage meter, make sure you run. That was loud. Make sure you run your power wire to your back input sources so from your amplifier your battery so that way you're reading from the most important current draw supply area draw in supply area is for your system um so that's it that's the video thanks for watching see y'all next time